Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me here. So we know that at the clinical level, ACM is characterized by ventricular arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. At the pathological level, it is characterized by the gradual degeneration of cardiac myocytes and their subsequent replacement by fat and fibrous tissue. And at the subcellular level, it is characterized by the loss of placoglobin and connection 43 from the cardiac intercalated discs, by increased apoptosis, and by increased secretion of pro-inflammatory mediators. Once you understand all the endpoints of a disease, you can essentially go to the lab and you can create an experimental model, which is crucial to us because it allows us to dissect molecular mechanisms of pathogenesis and to develop much needed mechanism-based therapies. So we established a collaboration with Callum McRae of the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and created a zebrafish model of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, which had a cardiac-specific expression of a mutation in the placoglobin gene that in patients causes Naxos disease, a highly penetrant form of the cardiomyopathy associated with cutaneous abnormalities. Now, these fish exhibit bradycardia, reduced cardiac output, and reduced stroke volume by 48 hours post-fertilization. Soon, they develop cardiomegaly, peripheral edema, and they show increased mortality by the time maturity is reached. So we used this line to screen a library of 5,000 bioactive compounds looking for disease modifiers. And out of these 5,000 drugs, one compound, SB216763, which I will refer to as SB2 for the remainder of the talk, showed a remarkable ability to alleviate bradycardia and contractility defects and remarkably increased survival in the mutant fish. So the next step was to test it in a mammalian model. And we tested it in two. One mouse that we created at Harvard with cardiac-specific expression of placoglobin bearing the Naxos disease mutation, and a mouse made at the Johns Hopkins that was a knocking mutant bearing two mutations. So it was a homozygous for a deletion in the Desmoglein 2 gene. So the placoglobin mouse, by four months of age, it has no evidence of disease. It has no arrhythmias, no histological lesions. But if you look at its heart under the microscope, you see that placoglobin and connexin 43 are gone from the junctions. It shows increased levels of apoptosis, and it does secrete pro-inflammatory mediators. So it does show the fundamental features of disease we first showed in the patient heart. A little bit later in life, by six months of age, it starts showing arrhythmias, premature ventricular contractions, and runs of ventricular tachycardia, and it does start showing lesions of fibrosis with inflammatory infiltrates. At nine months of age, the arrhythmia burden is much higher, the lesions are much more widespread, the heart is getting bigger, and the walls are getting much thinner, because now it is in heart failure. So starting at three months of age, we inject this mouse with the new drug, SB2, every day over a period of seven weeks. And by the end of this experiment, we saw that the distribution of placoglobin and connexin 43 was restored. There was no more apoptosis, and there was no more evidence of subcellular inflammation. But at this early stage of the mouse's life, we could not assess the efficacy of the drug on the actual clinical endpoints of the disease. So in the second experiment, we start with mice a little older, at six months of age, implant them with telemetry monitors, and inject them with the drug for seven weeks. At the end of this experiment, we saw that none of the treated animals had any arrhythmias, and none of the treated animals had developed any fibrotic lesions in their hearts. Now, if you start a little later than this, at nine months of age, you cannot stop the arrhythmias. And although you can't prevent the lesions from growing any further, you cannot reverse the damage that is already done. So, collectively, what we learned from these experiments is that the protein redistribution 
precedes and likely promotes arithmogenesis, and that this early stage, SB2 can stop both the arrhythmia and the myocardial injury phenotypes of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. But at a later stage, after the heart has been significantly remodeled, it is essentially too late. SP2 is of little value because now arrhythmias are mostly dependent on anatomic substrates. The second mouse, the Desmoglein 2 mouse, gets sick much earlier than the placoglobin mouse. By two months of age, its heart is much bigger, it shows very thin ventricular, right ventricular free wall with aneurysms, massive fibrotic replacement, echocardiography shows a great drop in ejection fraction down to 45% as opposed to 85%, that is what a normal mouse has. It shows arrhythmias, again PVCs and VT, a significant increase in QRS duration which reflects more ventricular ectopy and again Placoglobin and connexin 43 are gone from the junctions. So we started much earlier at three weeks of age, injecting this mouse every day with SB2 over 13 weeks, and echocardiography showed a dramatic restoration of ejection fraction. It went back up to 74% as opposed to 45 in animals that did not take the drug. The animals had no arrhythmias, QRS duration was normalized, no fibrotic replacement of the heart, and placoglobin and connexin 43 when were again localized where they should be. Now, these animals are homozygous for a deletion in Desmoglein 2. But if you take a heterozygous animal with only one mutant allele, it has no evidence of disease, even up to one year of age. No arrhythmias, no lesions, no even protein distribution changes in its heart. But if you subject this animal to endurance exercise in the form of swimming every day over a number of weeks, then these animals will develop arrhythmias, they will develop lesions, and placoglobin and connexin 43 will leave the junctions. And if you inject them with SB2 prior to this swimming regime, you prevent all of these abnormalities from happening. So this is beyond the scope of my talk, but I think it is a nice example to show the deleterious effects that endurance exercise may have in otherwise asymptomatic ARVC mutation carriers. So we had a drug that could prevent every disease-associated abnormality. What is it? SB2 was designed about 30 years ago as an analog of lithium for patients with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, and thankfully it never made it to the market since it turns out that it can cause cancer. And that was a huge disappointment because this miraculous drug that we had found could never make it to clinical trials, but all the work did not go to waste because it focused our attention to one enzyme. See, SP2 has been annotated as a specific inhibitor of glycogen synthase kinase 3-beta. And this is an enzyme that normally is found in the cytoplasm, and it forms a complex with a number of other proteins called the degradation complex. Its role is to phosphorylate proteins, earmarking them for ubiquitination and proteasomal breakdown. And actually, the most heavily researched protein that is targeted by this enzyme is beta-catenin, a protein very closely related to placoglobin, but actually it does target many more proteins, affecting a lot of other signaling pathways. And we would have never stumbled upon the importance of this enzyme if it wasn't for this fish screen that identified that drug. If you inhibit this enzyme pharmacologically, you can stop ARVC. Now, the vast majority of drugs, apart from their main target, they may actually have a number of off-target effects. So to be absolutely sure that this was the enzyme we were targeting in order to stop ARVC, we needed a cleaner approach, a genetic approach. So the LOX system allows you to put flux around the gene in the genome. The Cree system is essentially a pair of scissors that sees these flags and can cut a gene out of the genome. Now, GSK3 beta is needed for development, so you cannot ablate it from the genome right at the beginning of an animal's life, but you can engineer the Cree gene, the scissors, so it becomes active only in the presence of a drug. 
So you can actually create a triple transgenic animal that has lock sites, flux around GSK3 beta. It has the Cre gene, the scissors, but engineered in such a way so it is only active when you add tamoxifen, and then it can have an ARVC causing mutation. So you wait until these mice get into adulthood, then you feed them tamoxifen, activate the pair of scissors, and cut GSK3 beta out of the genome. And this animal will not develop the cardiomyopathy. So you cut this enzyme out, and you do not develop the disease. So to conclude, we do not have a drug, but we have a target. So we are a little closer to a cure. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>